Well, this is a sort of dip into the past. People have come down on a river, been told even by um, the gentleman who runs it, he says, really, really bad fishing. He said, at this time, when I'm, I've come here, it's like September, they've had, I think he said, one barbel all year. Now, this used to be a prime big barbel place. And years ago, I'm talking 40 plus years ago, it was a numbers place of barbel down there. Um, opposite the uh, sort of roadway of the Mackay stick float fishing down by some trees and they used to catch barbel really good three four pounders not monsters then it changed and it went to you know bigger fish and you can get and I have had one or two big fish here I've never had huge red leather days but I've had some real halfway decent fish here and it was a mixed fishery but apparently now even looking on forms it says crayfish crayfish and more crayfish they say if you want to spend your money and go crayfishing fine but I don't always believe that because you don't know what the anglers fish like. So I, I probably, as they say, you might blank. I'm looking for catching anything. It's a fabulous spot to fish anyway. Look at it. I mean, let's climb up here. There is some, some weed down there. There's a lot of darker stream of weed that seems to be dying back now. This is a, a big weir pool here. You see, I'm up in the corner of the weir pool. I don't think I've actually caught a barbel from here. I have lost a barbel, this is like 10, 15, 12 years ago, whatever, down about where my net is, just down the inside of the wall. The uh, bailiff at the time, Peter, he's in our fields. Uh, Peter, I like barbel fishing with rolling meat. So I guess you can't ledge a meat now because the crayfish will be on them, um, the meat. But I'm going to give it a go. I'm basically going to go a good hour or so here. I've got to give it a go. I'm going to fish a feeder down the inside of the wall purely because 12 years ago I hooked a fish there in dusk. I've never been here this early before, and by early I'm talking 11 o'clock in the morning, I normally just do an afternoon and evening. Um, a nice flow of water, there's a tinge of colour in it because we've had some thunderstorms, we are going to get out here, look, fairly sure we're going to get thunderstorms and rain, so I bought my big brolly as well. So I figure any bait going down here might work, and then down the inside of the wall down these would be quite good for perch, I've no idea if there's minnows in here, if there is I can maybe get one out for perch. And then the barbel swims used to be further downstream. But I'm going to try with the feeder on the inside and then I'm going with the float. I'm using one of Andy, Andy's uh, floats here. I'll show you which one. Nice pretty one. Hope I don't lose it. It is a pretty float. Plenty of oxygen coming through there. But for some reason they just say to fish in. And this is true of this river all the way up and down. It's really, really, really like so many rivers we've got. It's dropped off hugely. I don't know what's happened to the fish. A buzzer, so if I look away, I uh, can hear something. I'll put a hook at the back, which I use mostly when I'm uh, when I'm filming. Ground bait, some maggots, a few pellets. Bailey's uh, number one, and a little bit of band, not too much brand, because I didn't know what the current would be like. I've got, I'll show you later, some uh, balls and dendrobeners. And I've got something I want to try for perch later. Look white bait has it any but they look perfect for, for if I can't catch minnows I could scatter a few of these and maybe try one either legend on the bottom or float fish that's not going to smell very nice but those about four years I think caught on Chesil Beach when I say caught I mean netted picked up off the beach sandwich time check the rain and then we get bait in the water in fact I think I'll get the feeder out first so it's a bit noisy with the water running over uh, the weir there, so I'm fishing with a running ledger there, as you uh, you know, it's, oh, sorry, it's a ledger, it's a swim feeder, but it's a running link, about 15, 18 inches um, hook link there, a um, bit of a weird feeder that one is, um, just a strange one I think somebody must have given me, and then I'm going to run a float rod as well, um, just standard, on the aim rod, six pound line, straight through, I'm not going to bother with any hook links, cannot be bothered with any of that, because you know, you might hit a good fish, you know, and towing it ground for God's, God's sake. Uh, just a you know, smallish hook, probably 12 14 on the bottom. Shirt button shot, as they call it, up the line because you're in a river. And one of Andy's floats there is a nice one, sort of what I call a bodied Avon float. Very, very pretty design. Hope the fish appreciate it, but it looks nice and it is a nice, a nice finish on the float. And I've probably got one or two rubber bands on the float to stop it sliding when you strike. Bunch of maggots going on there. This is on the feeder rod. Filling it up with the ground bait. 
Now, there's not a huge amount of flow going down that river as I speak, so I'm not going to squeeze it in there too tight, just a little bit. If I squeeze it too tight, it's going to come back, and I don't want it with the ground break in the feeder. The feeder has to be emptied. It's no good if you have um, a load of bait come back in the feeder. It's not going to catch anything there. It's got to be in the river. I'm lobbing it out slightly downstream there on the back edge of that sort of swirly water. You let it run around and settle. Check the drag, always check the drag, and to stop it getting ripped off, if it ever does get ripped off, I've got, you see that hook there, like a sort of 10 peg thing I've made up. So if it pulls down, and coupled with the bite alarm and a quiver tip, if I look away, do some filming, which I'm doing all the time, at least I won't get the rod towed in. The butt comes up and hits that hook, like that, there. Well, first trot down I ran down here and went down the slack area over there I think it was dragging the bottom when I got a small fish hooked up dace I'm guessing it's in fact saved the blank it's a roach what about that in the background and he's taken it so they must be feeding anyway that's a start I put the feeder back in here. The reason I cast it out here to start with is trying to get a bit of food food going down there. But I've got a feeling I'm going to put a worm on that because I just got got a bit of a, a hunch it might be a perch. More down the side of that wall rather than a barbel. If, if, he's, if he's saying there's been hardly any barbel caught or a barbel caught, then maybe uh, I'll be better off trying a worm. And there are wild brown trout not stock ones you'll be pleased to hear wild brown trout in this river as well you might get to see one especially uh, like this on the float so that was i don't want to use all this ground bait because i want some for the feeder later this afternoon so rather than going to fast water i'm going to go down there because roach do like a bit of uh, slightly slower water Good start. Probably burn out now. Well, uh, nothing more than that single roach. Had about 10 or 12 runs down. I've seen some little tiny, tiny fry just hop out, and that's about it. Um, I'm going to change over on the feeder here and put it down the inside because one of the problems here fishing in a weir pool with the float is that it's a job to see, especially when you get older, the float in amongst the bubbles. So you could be missing by it's the only place I'm seeing them. Is down the back in that sort of slick area there so i'm going to give it a little while here and put um, a worm down there the worms i've got are these just regular dendrobenas i can't dig any myself i've tried i cannot dig them it's just you know too dry so best to go in the tackle shop and get some put a couple of those on behind the feeder drop it down the inside because perch do like to work and hunt up and down the walls and it's quite deep there. You know, when I put the feeder down, it goes down a long way before it actually goes bump on the bottom on the riverbed. So I'm just going to sort of anchor a worm down there and have another 10 minutes with the flow. I think one worm would probably do it because you've got quite a small hook here, about a 12 or something like that. And if it's bad for crayfish here, as they say, I'm going to get chewed off anyway with bait I sort of would feel better rolling a piece of meat around I have to say or even hooking myself in the sock or shoe is it possible to do that if you were asked to so I want to say most of this with this big feeder for the uh, late afternoon but let's just see where we can drop this Yeah, that's quite a good depth there. Check my drag. And in we go behind this little locking hook I put there. Look, I don't need it for perch, I'm sure, but... You just put it there, you got it for safety. So as that rod pulls down the butt goes up there 
hooks of fish, but more importantly, you don't lose the rod and reel. I did read, I'm mean, hoping you can hear this over the roar of the uh, weir pool behind me. I did hear somebody on the forum somewhere said that to go really light, like a single maggot to get uh, any bites from stace and stuff like this. So my way of three maggots on a size 12 is pretty crude. Gone down the edge of the bubbles, another fish. Just like a little perch. Wow. Oh, he's fallen off. He's falling in the water. Little small perch here, at least. It's a, it's a, it's a fish and it's a different species. He said hardly anybody's been fishing here because the fishing's been so bad. So there's been no bait going in the water. I forgot to get red maggots. Sometimes red maggots can be good for perch as well and other species. I just got plain whites. I forgot to get mixed. So if you are going to get just a pint of maggots to a casual day's fishing, I suggest getting a mix of pint and make some red and whites. It just gives you a bit of a change bait. The reason I've gone down there further with the catapult is because it's so I can see by the bubbles it's circulating back there. So provided I could I could see through the bubbles for the bite, there might be uh, a chance of another fish. We get some trembles and quivers on the quiver tip rod. Um, I think they're crayfish, but a couple of definitely perch. I feel. Look at they stretch a worm down. See, they've chewed it. You can see that there, they chewed and stretched all the way down. So I'm figuring very big crayfish or small perch. They're all sort of the same size, but our big perch, you know, I've had some real big ones. They're lucky sometimes, a lot of small ones, obviously. Like this little guy. It's still fish to catch, isn't it, at the end of the day. And although the fishing might not be what it was, it's still fishing. Well, it's tough, tough, tough. Other than those small perch, I've now moved away from. We're uh, sitting there, back that way. I've got bangs on the inside, lost a crayfish. Lost a crayfish. <laughs> Excitement indeed. And I've moved to here. Occasionally I used to see stuff across there years and years ago, but it's sort of smoky looking now. And I'm just down, let's climb up here. There's more flow, a nice drop off here. I've never done a lot of good there, but I've had perch down there. So you used to be able to fish off that little semi-circular bit out there so I just dropped a feeder and a double worm down here I've no idea you know whether there's uh, anything at home or not there's a little sluice comes in there so I thought I'd try that lovely looking pool but a couple of other guys I spoke to said you know it's pretty dead who knows I can only try I think it was Fred J Taylor very famous tench fisherman years ago used to say never go back to your childhood dreams He's not wrong. Well, the rain's come in, they said would come in. A little bit of a breeze. Nothing on the worms. Nothing on the maggots. Not even a crayfish. So I'm going on one of these white baits. If there's anything there that's usable. I'm going to try one of those. Sort of about a size 10 hook and see if I can't float it down and uh, pick off a perch, a bigger perch. Yeah, he did forecast it. Good job I bought the big volley, but the trouble is I want to move swims. I'll give it a while here anyway. Well, I've moved from uh, down that corner there. Come on the other side of that sluice, if you can just see down there. And this is sort of, used to be years and years ago, a big perch area. Draining sluice there. 
so they could be perked anywhere along here and there's real old stakes there which I'm always fancying so I'm going to try maybe I don't think I'll bother with a feeder I think I'm going to save that there that piece of uh, coralline nylon is going to be having a crayfish trap on it I figure a gamble uh, because third time lucky they say and the sun's out um, and it's definitely going to rain again so I thought I'd move in between rain so let's give it a go a float fish white bait and probably float fish worm might even free line the worm much as I want to save the ground bait I'm going to scatter some down they're just just loose like this but I don't see any minnows or anything coming here years ago you could catch minnows here I'm just going to sort of let that wash around down there on the float and I'll probably get a free line worm take that feeder off yeah, you can see down about a foot or so I don't know how deep it is there just let that sort of wash around but tight into the edges rub salt into the wound with the lack of fish and the crayfish and the otters just come up right in front of me boiled on the surface and disappeared so he's probably eaten everything in his pool anyway that's why I'm not getting any bites I won't get any bites while he's here for sure so do about 15 minutes and then I'll move again I think See, this is why the people don't, uh, they, they won't come. <laughs> and can you blame them? There are just so many of these guys down there. There are absolutely loads of these, hordes of them in there. And I talked to an EA guy once and he said, the best thing you can do, you cannot put them back, you have to stamp on them. They're great big pinchers and they are absolutely decimating everything else in the river. red signal crayfish lovely turn away now while this one has a little bit of uh, treatment well I think I'm gonna move down the other swim guys and just uh, sit it out down there and possibly catch some more crayfish and just go on the uh, on the quiver tip because that was on a float that was dragging on the bottom on worms so they must be rabid in here well I've moved down to what they call the lawn swims <laughs> I couldn't find them there so overgrown. Anyhow, the only one I can find really is here. Uh, right on the road there, just literally 40 yards away, so you can get motorbikes, trains, aeroplanes, chainsaws, whatever. I've thrown one up here, one down there. And these, about three swims, which I go past with that moped. Hard to believe how it's changed, how it's unbelievable. If you look at some of our old films and see where we fish with Peter, you know, and these, these swims are like worn. This tells me no one's fished it for, well, some time really. I've had to knock a few rushes down. So they've got this little walkway here and they've got a stage in, which is wobbly every time I walk on it. As you can see, I get, I get bites galore when I walk on it. So I've thrown one feeder out here, nothing. I like that up there, but I can't fish it from the other hole up there. There's just too much jungle, plus it's a fallen branch. It's a shame the EA don't ever get out and clear this stuff, you know, because it makes life so much easier for everybody. Also up here, I've appeared to either trodden in, sat in, put my bags in, some doggy do. So that's nice. Something really, really stinks around here. I'll check my boots. I reckon it's doggy do. Well, they say it's lucky, don't they? They do say it's lucky. So I need it. Oh, he's bending around because he's got weed on him. That'll be the swan sending the weed down. It's such a shame when you see what fishery used to be. Now, now here's a problem, people. The problem is the youngsters are taught today will think this is the norm. This is very much not the norm at all. You need to look at some of our really old films 10 years ago. 
it's deter every, every river in the UK must have deteriorated, I think. Far up in the north, they tell me they are improving. So there's no fish, doggy do. Overground places don't even recognise. There's a fair chance I'm going to get stormed on by a huge thunderclap. Light. I might get hit by lightning today, you never know. Oh well, at least I'm trying. I just had to grab the camera, I've got a fish on guys. It's not very big, but it's a fish and he's gone in the weed. Swim feeder and worm, hopefully he doesn't come off. Look, it's not a barbel. It might be a small chub. No, I don't think it is. Is that a grayling? Oh, it might be a chub. Just what I thought it wasn't. Well. He's not very big, but my goodness me, I didn't think there was a fish alive in this river that hadn't been eaten by a by a crayfish. And there you go. That's the reason I'm using the worms, because there's an outside chance of pretty much any other fish as well. Well, perch. Well, nice to get a big perch, small perch. One roach, but I'll come out of it with hopefully a decent chub. Oh, let's get him back without tangling everything. There we go. Well, ordinarily I would have liked to approach a chub swim by casting upstream and letting the bait go under there and drawing them up and hopefully getting bites up here. But I've got no choice here, that's the only swim I can fish that you know there might be fish in so i'm assuming it hasn't come down from here it's come up i would guess same here feeders not squeezed too tightly with the ground bait in there if you've got a few maggots in there they'll help to break it up as well and ordinarily this would be really good swim but i can't believe how overgrown it is i'm lobbing as far well that was some cars i'm lucky to get that one back far bank is where i'm going that's what you don't want guys you want it out there As you can see, the hook's polished, and that's what the crayfish do for for you on baits. Just using single worms at the moment. I don't see any reason to go bigger. I'll tell you where you are. You can also tip off if you wanted with a white maggot. You know, just well, any maggot really doesn't have to be white, but. Sometimes I just think that gives him a bit of a target to look at. So, next time, I don't want to squeeze that ground bait in quite as hard. Every time I put the rag down, that happens. And I'm going to go just in line with that tree. See, I don't know any swims anymore. It's all changed. Hits the bottom. I bump it once, make sure I'm right in the weed. If I'm in the weed, I'll bring it in and cast it again. If tea and cakes, if this doesn't get a bite for me, nothing will. I was going to stay till 8 when the fishery uh, closes, but I think I'll give it till 7.30 there. The way it is, consider myself lucky. Oh, ginger cake. If anybody goes out on the boat and gets seasick, ginger biscuits or ginger cake, nibbling on will generally keep the seasickness at bay. Mmm. I have no idea the calorific content though. Come on, fish, give us a break. Evening used to be really good here, so I've got to, got to hang on. Time here I'm filming is September, the leaves haven't turned yet. This is caused by the drought, not by actual autumnal colours changing. If you watch the tips, you won't see it with the, uh, you know, this camera. The little tiny quivers on that, on that quiver tip there, where, that, that's a crayfish getting hold of the worm and chopping it all up. There, see the little quivers? I can't get any closer. These things are in plague proportions. Look, look at the size of that. That is like a miniature lobster. 
and then we wonder why we've got no fish left in the rivers and that's all he's left me of the worm it's absolutely a waste of time well as I say the guys on the forums or sort of letters pages as I call them they were right they said they don't mind as long as you don't mind feeding the crayfish to be honest they're not wrong Think of the cost of fuel and bait and everything, you know. Not cheap days fishing, is it, anymore? I don't know if to move or not. I might find somewhere where there's even more crayfish, that's the trouble. See, there should be here, at a river like this, fish dimpling, this time, five, six o'clock in the evening, in the autumn, early autumn. It should be all dimpling on the surface, all over. Odd fish splashing, odd fish rolling. Nothing is looking so, this is not just here. I mean, this is loads and loads of rivers. This particular river I, I have heard has had problems. Up and down it for like 20 miles up and down it. Look, see, look, there's the worm. Chopped, chopped, chopped. I fear looking at the horizon there's some serious rain coming. It's just not worth moving, I just don't feel it's worth moving guys. I want to, I want to move I think, get away from the crayfish. Wow that is a good cast, that deserves a chub or a barbel. Looks like barbel are going to be a thing of the past. Thing is, you live in the past. Well, us older guys live in the past, and we didn't, poss you know, possibly didn't realise how good the past was. I was always sort of late to the show. If I could have been fishing in my prime in the 1950s, wow, there must have been some barbel and chum around then. Oh my god, I started sort of late 60s, mid 60s I suppose really and of course what we do is we remember the swims, what we caught where I would leave 13 pound out of this swim now <laughs> I, can't, I can't catch one one pound, I can't catch a barbel of a pound and of course what you do is you older guys you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait because in your mind you're seeing a rod suddenly buckle and crash over and you just manage to grab it and you've got a massive barbel on the end and that's what keeps us going but even for me with all my enthusiasm I'm finding it pretty tough not getting bites it's the middle smaller middle range fish that bothers me not the big ones I don't go for big ones if they come along great if they don't they don't I'm really bothered specimen I didn't know forget all that I don't do all that it's the small, medium fish that most people want to catch, and there should be more of those than there are. There is, like, nothing. Admittedly, I've got a bigger hook, a worm, but I should be getting, let's say, half pound to a pound chub, almost one a chub. This is the River Kennet, for God's sake. You know, there used to be loads and loads of chub in there. Where have they gone? Have the otters eaten all the chub? Have they died off from whatever? See, the thing is, they can only be, let's say we had the perch disease, which wiped a load of perch out. That was known as the perch disease, the carp get carp disease or whatever, KHV or whatever they call it. They can't all have the same diseases or similar disease to that species all at the same time to wipe everything out. Where are the bulk of the small to medium fish? That's what I find so strange. You know, autumn in the evening, the rod top should be banging away. And I've got two out there, look, I've got two rods that just sat there. The only tapping I'm getting, I'm like this little bump, 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 bump from those crayfish all the time. I think I'll hang on to those, uh, hang on to those boilies. I think they're just they're too, they're too good, they're too expensive boilies, aren't they, to waste on a crayfish? Well, I fired a, a set of gear in the bush on the opposite side, trying to get closer and closer. I think I'm going to call it pretty well stuffed today. Tough day at the office, as they say, over there. It's coming in really grey and they have forecast a lot of rain. Thunderstorms last night, I don't need to be in one of those dry packing up. So, it is what it is guys, sorry I couldn't catch anything today. Or well, what I did catch, I scratched out. But, 
I haven't been here for like six, eight years, something like that. I think, I think it might be another six or eight before I have a look at it again. We'll see you next time, or maybe I'll think of something to do in the totally awesome camera room. Might even see you back home. Well, I disappointed fishing trip on that river, and do you know what I mean? A bit downhearted, aren't you? Because some of the fish I had out there, I'd never had huge, I had some really good fish out there individually, not big bags, but I just could see nothing moving at all. So, I feel like I've cheated you guys and I've cheated myself. So I'm going to pop down to Watmore, see if I can scratch a few fish out. I don't know, might get three, four hours, something like that. But, important thing, at the right time, I'm going to be using this. I've got a bit of this stuff left over, which says, sticky cork, it's got to be right, look, carp and coarse sticky syrup. It's a carpy thing. So, I really don't even use it, do you know, especially if I can't get it out. Can't even work anything. It's sad, isn't it? I don't know how much you put in. I've got to, I'll whack it all in. I don't care. I won't get used. Might keep the bottle for something. I won't be dipping it for carp. Wow, it smells sweet. Now, we used to do really well for bream using sweet stuff like this. But I'm not just putting that in the ground bait. I'm going to put some water in there first and then mix it in the ground bait. So it's maybe, maybe just spread all the way around. See, that'll be too thick as it is. So I'm just going to sort of dilute it down and see i don't know if it's supposed to go in ground bait what do i know about it all the old carpy warpy stuff i don't know i just thought maybe it's not supposed to go in oh I'll tell you what i can do shake this up get some out of there that can all go in. Actually, that might be better. It'd be interesting. I mean, I, I catch using this stuff anyways, you know. Baileys and bran, that's all I, that's all I go up and buy up the agricultural feed place. I'm only going to be fishing close in at Watmore. See if I can catch something. I sat all day on that river. Just difficult. Four different swims I went to. Even the lady, when she came out for the ticket money, she said, I've been trying to find you. She said, you keep moving swims all the time. I do. There we go, that's better. Look, it might work, guys. It might not. I've got to give it a try. God, it certainly smells sweet. But we used to use strawberry for tension bream. It used to be one of our go-tos for additives. Mind you, the additives weren't Possibly maybe they weren't as thick as they are concentrated as they are nowadays. See, this can be soaking, so when I get to the lake, I can wallop some in. Time is not on my side. So I've turned up at the lake. I'm fishing a swim just in the corner here. Where we've got some lilies. I'm still falling over bits and bobs. Wouldn't mind fishing this one right tight in the corner, but it looks like it's breaking up there, and that's what the bollard's for, telling you not to fish. Let's see if we can do any good anyway. So first thing is, you get the ground bait in. Now, I haven't put the film up yet, I don't think, but I just stopped on worms and I had a blinding session, very, very short, about two hours, it was manic. I don't ever learn anything like it. So I come back to the same place. The second time I went there, the fishing was no good. It was just, for some reason, it was just all small perch. So what I'm gonna do is come back, I'm gonna go to that same swim, purely because the wind is in the same direction as which that which I had the good catch. So we find out, there's quite a few people in fishing. There's the scene, nice and smooth, ripples over there. Traditionally you'd be fishing into the wind, but a bit awkward and I. I'll probably have to go float fishing and put one on the ledger and uh, I'll show you the different ways of uh, using up leftover bait. So that's where I'm going to be fishing, just down here. I've got the seat set up. This one's got adjustable legs. That's the only reason I bring it. It weighs a ton. It's not the world's most comfortable, but it does adjust it and give you a level seat in there. So previously I fished down the lilies, which you think would be a traditional spot. No, nah, not really done any good there. For some reason, just straight down in front of me where that sort of spear blade stuff or whatever, the spiky rushes that have fallen over there. Um, by the way, if you get fish in those, generally you don't get it back. But just down here, there's a drop off almost level with that. That's why the lilies aren't growing in the middle, because here at Watmore, very, very deep. And there's a drop off just out there, about rod length out. I might even drop a ball of ground bait down here. But I think just straight in the middle, I just straight this. 
It's telling me it's the same conditions, the same wind, the same cloud. It's pretty much the same. So let's see if my theory works. I've got in there that funny pink strawberry stuff. I've got quite a bit of uh, ground bait. I've got some left over, uh, maggots and stuff like that. But they're going to cast us like this, I'll show you. A beginners and that. You see, now they've been in the fridge, but they're going to cast us there. You can see the cast, different types. Some float when they go really dark. What you want for fishing really is, I can't get older one now. Now that color there, like a gold. That's, it. That's the best one really. And then maggots in there as well. So I'm gonna pop some of these balls in and then I'm gonna uh, rig up the rod and reel. I'm gonna make the balls tight because the maggots will wriggle apart and push these balls and break them up. And also I want the small fish to fight over it a bit more. You know, if I left that, how can I describe it? If I had, I haven't put that many maggots in there, but that, you know, if it's soft, if you watch me squeeze this, see the maggots rigging apart? They come, they're gonna break the, this ground bait look like this, they're gonna break it all up and the fish can eat it quicker. So I'm trying to make them a bit tighter so that they last a bit longer. Now, fingers crossed, we don't wanna go far. This is the theory, it's never a theory, well it's not a theory, I obviously do it all the time. It's not the best clarity for seeing fish, but trust me, they will come in close. Well, I'm going to be fishing with uh, worms, dendrobenas on probably ledger. I've got a quiver tip on there, I'm going to put it on a buzzer. I'm going to try and get the float just to the same side. So I'm going to fish them as a pair down there. Probably put the um, worm just down on the right hand side and fish the float to the left. So this is about not wasting bait. Because the worms, albeit tired, I can scissor a few of those up. And I can assure you the fish won't turn their noses up at them. And I'm not wasting them. You know, you can keep these chilled. Look, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's four days and they were second hand when I got them. Second hand worms. I don't think anybody uses second hand worms. We see what happens. I might I might get plagued like the uh, I did with a small perch. But I'm gonna give it a go to get off of the small perch, hopefully. I like a big perch, obviously. I'm gonna take a risk and leave plenty of worm shine so they can pull this and I get a false bite. So I'm gonna basically wait till it pulls really tight. But wait for this. You might want to go and have a lay down. This is brand new line on here. First time in two years. Six pound, straight through. Uh, what is it, Maxima Camellia, and I haven't changed for years. Now let's drop this down there. I'm gonna let it drop around that. I'm gonna stick out there. Just let it sink to the bottom. Just park him there. Use my hair grip. Bobbin, bobbin indicator. Put that through there. Oh Christ, it's going already. Sounds like the small perch are in town, guys. And I keep this in on back wind. Oh, look, 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 look. <laughs> He's pulled the worms way over there. So this might not be the uh, the method. Just let that sink and that bobbin's gonna, I feel, shoot up. The worms are favorite for the uh, perch. That sounds like a spitfire. It is indeed. I think it's spitfire or hurricane. There might be a hurricane. Sort of square ended, ended uh, wings. Lovely noise, like a Harley Davidson really in the air. Oh, I wish I had the zoom camera. Tell immediately. There he goes. There goes the bobbin. No, 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 no. And then I missed it. They're going from here. That's interesting. They're going from there, coming back in here. All I've got on there is a hook and a BB. And I think if that's going to be the case, I'm going to need to put a link ledge on with maybe a swan trot so those small perch can't tow it totally out of position.
don't do like I do and put this right in front of you because if you stand up you've all done this a lot of fishermen you tread on the lip and they go flying out so I've now got I'll show you this in between before I even put the float out let's blow this off okay so you've got if you can see those gold ones dark ones and the dark ones invariably might float so you want you oh look at this look you want um the gold colored for your hook because they're softer these ones that one is a softer caster there and if i've got one that one is a harder case on the caster that also will get to the stage of floating so you need to know to separate the floaters from the sinkers they may even at this stage actually still um, be all sinkers even though a few of them are dark but if you take this off the riddle there you go in the bottom look i just if you want to use play maggots you've got play maggots they will get eaten and mullered by those perch i dare say and all the roach if i want to use casters i can use casters and that's going to try on the float first single caster and casters to be honest are very good for chub and very good for roach so let's see what we can catch with them i'm going to put a few in there and just toss them out the float because i'm in a furious rage about not catching at that other one i'm using the same float normally with fish <clears throat> a waggler i'm just fishing with uh, one of andy's homemade ones beautifully made homemade floats here and I've fixed it top and bottom just to be a bit awkward because I'm only close. Look at this worm being chomped around. I've got the, the shot down towards the hook and I've got there, I think it's a 16 grips hook. And I'm going to start with a couple of maggots. So I want the live maggots which have already riddled off, as you can see. This is all leftover bait. Look, you can go and buy casters if you want to buy casters, they're quite expensive. If you want small fish, small roach, one or two maggots, that's all you need. Is it going to be worse than that river I fished? Surely, well, I'm, I'm on the way. I, I think I had two or three perch there. Now, let's get this float out. It's so close, there's no wind, I don't really need to. <laughs> I think there's one on there that. You might just see the float there settling. Shot takes you down near the bottom and you should, should get a roach on it. There he goes. And because I've got it right down near the bottom, I've plumbed the depth, I've got the bait on the bottom. I actually wait for it to uh, move off at an angle. And there, I think that's going to be a roach. I may be wrong. And indeed, I am wrong. It's a perch. So, maggots work. I can assure you the casters will be taken as well. So we'll, we'll get our riddle and search out a couple of nice... You put two or three on a hook this size. You'll find that the golden ones like this, are, you could almost start slightly sort of springy the outer casing on them. They're tugging away at that worm there. And I will be putting a link ledger on there. Let's just try it at full depth, which is what I am, with the caster. That's the gold caster. Ah, very nice piece of weed there. That's a specimen, I know. You might notice here, immediately, less bites on the caster. Now, if you get fish feeding, they're gonna pop that caster and it's gone. You're there with a bare hook. So, I don't give it too long, but I'm gonna bind that in slowly just to show you. Have a look. And if you, remember I put two on there, and there's the two, you see? We give it one more go. So the white maggots went straight away. There 
there we go and I always always keep that on backwind just in case a carp comes along and it cranks off it's gonna bring it in there's the two gold casters you see I pop them they go all mushy the fish love them when they pop them we go back to the white maggots Generally, the caster will pick off the better fish. And we get a couple of maggots on there. Well, I'm going to tie three white maggots. We just leave the camera running. I'll tell you if you can't see the float, I can tell you when there's going to be a bite. There. Look, immediately with a white, look, 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 immediately with a white, white maggot, I've got the take. Now you would think the white maggot is better. It's better for stuff like perch. But if you do want roach, you've got to do two things. You've got to fish with casters, the golden ones, and you've got to come up in the water and keep bait going regularly. Now I'm on six pounds straight through, I wouldn't obviously fish with a, that heavier line for roach. If I was fishing for them, I'm pretty sure in here, there's a lot of ro roach in here, they would actually take it. So another thing that'll happen is, you'll be getting bites regularly where you're feeding, and it'll go quiet, a bit like this, and that can often mean that a uh, carp or tench or bream or bigger fish has moved in and pushed the smaller fish out. So even though it goes a bit quiet, sometimes it's just worth leaving the float there for a few minutes in case this big fish moved in the swim. I've been alternating between six, six or eight maggots, a little pinch like this, and casters. Just, just literally out like that. Give it time to sink, and there's going to be fish coming up off the bottom. You've just got to do little and often. Like this, look, just a, a few casters. Oh, I think you might have seen that one that just popped on the surface. Well, I know they're there. I can see them beneath the beneath the uh, ripples. Now, they'll only be small fish, but eventually doing this, you will get bigger fish come in. I'm trying to do it as close as I can. Yeah, there's roach in there. Occasionally, you can do this, you can, you can give them a little pinch of ground bait, I, but only very small, because otherwise you're gonna pull the fish too deep. Oh dear. No, it's not a perch. I think that was a fail hook carp. No, I changed over to maggots on that one, so. We can bounce between maggots and casters now, and I've gone back to the uh, deeper water. No sign of the roach yet. Now, ideally, I've kept that float not totally shotted down because I've got to allow for the weight of the worm. But if I was roach fishing, I'd want it shotted way down so there's a little pip showing, but I'm just trying to double up, you know, and get the odd roach, but have an outside chance of a bigger fish on the worm as well, maybe a big perch, a bream, a tench, even a carp. And even that's sinking very slowly, so small fish are hammering that, stopping the shot, pull it down. Now it's now it's set properly. I'll give them a little pinch. A little pinch of ground bait as well. Just starting to move. And of course, that float movement like this, just slowly, could be a fish down at the bottom digging around, but I don't think so. It is our friend the perch. Now the other thing you can do, if you are going for small fish, you don't have to use big, I've got big worms, well it's a dendrobina, but you don't have to use the whole worm. You can snip up a section of it and we'll give that a go. I'm fairly sure a perch will have it, but you never know. I've got like about a third section of worm here. There's pointless me putting a big worm on because 
I've only got a, a 16 hook, it's a small hook, a bit fiddly for me doing it filming at the same time. There we go, we'll try that. Same space, same place. Put down the holder. I feel the worms going straight away. There it goes, missed it. Section of worm, I think it's very good because they got the juice coming out of the worm as well. And you get a lot of different species of it. Roach, perch, bream, tench, carp. There we go. That's a section. Oh, bigger perch. Tell a lie. There we go. Straight away on a small section. So you can use a big piece of worm and you're going to get towed around and, and probably miss quite a few. But if you use, like I've got, let's put it back down, a little section like that. It can be very, very good. I think I'll do a bream or something larger. Oh, better perch. That you might have noticed the float didn't even go under. Yeah. A little bit bigger. A little, slightly, slightly marginally bigger perch. It's just starting to drift to one side or the other. Oh, hang on a minute, people. The worm section is getting better fish. I've tried several different depths. I've tried several different baits. Whole worms, casters, maggots, dark casters, gold casters, sections of worms and it, now I'm starting to get a bit of regularity in bites with the sections of worms. There's a second carp moving over there. I'm going to shallow this right up. I think there's two carp there. So if you're in warmer weather, these can literally turn in half an hour and turn and you don't want floaters, you just do this. Get yourself another one of these containers, put some water in it, tap in your casters like that, and then you'll be able to see the ones on the bottom will stop turning because they're colder, and the ones on the top will be the floaters there. Can you see how they're much, much darker? So you can actually slow up the process of them turning into the dark casters or chrysalis and floaters. There might be places that you want to fish with a floater for a say rad or something like that, or you want a slow sink, or you want a buoyant cast on a fine hook, uh, a fine wire. But if you put those out, they will float and bring fish up to the surface if you're allowed. And then of course if you if you if you if you skim them all off, you just strain those off and put them in your bait bucket. But if you keep them in the water you will find that they uh, they slow up going from gold to dark. We're well, fishing the half section of worm close in finally I've loaded up on one and it is obviously a decent sized fish. I'm guessing, well it has to be a carp with a bend like that. Well it'd be nice to come out with a fish and salvage something from that river session. Oh, it's got some pressure on it. He's all right. That looks like a common carp. I'm still sitting down. How lazy is this? Carol's just coming around. Doing her ticketing. Oh, I've been lifting stuff for Mike up at his woodland place. And the old shoulder's going. Let's hope he doesn't get in 
that lot. That's what we don't want him in. And this rod, this is very, very soft rod, this um, this match rod. I mean, it's quite handy, really, if you've got smaller hooks. So I can't sort of put any more on this one because I've only got a 16 on there. Yeah, it's a carp. I thought for a split second it might be a big uh, perch, but no. We don't want him getting in the lilies if we can help it. Might well, look like a roach jumped out there then. Well, they do go well here at Watmore, there's no question of that. It's fish about probably eight pounds, nine pounds, something like that. I might have to bring this off. I don't know what battery length I've got on here. Well, it might be getting near the end. Yeah, he's in. That's a common carp, but you can see even half sections of worms can come up with some good fish. I'm a bit of a slope here, so I have to get what I can. A decent carp. And it's in good condition, that's uh, all that matters. Action on the bent rod. Back he goes. Wow, we got the skunk out of the boat, as they say. A lot of it's because I didn't put the net out properly. It's got to be at that angle, slightly tipping towards the water. Left hand side is very often better than the right. These people think I'm joking, I'm not. Wow. That was a move worth making. Well, I've lost two other carp. I must have had 50 perch, 60 perch. Nothing big at all, no big ones. It's impossible to get through to the bigger fish. And lost two carp as well, and this one's going into the lilies by the look of it. He knows those lilies are there. I might have got him out. No, perhaps not. Anyway, it's a fish. Come on, better than it was on that river. And I haven't got to stay here all day, have I? Just an afternoon, early evening session. Wow, he's going well this one. I don't think he's a very big fish, but I'll take anything at this stage. Let's see if we can whiz him. Oh, he's in. He's in. Another common carp. Can I get it all over my camera lens? I can see it. He's just nicked on the outside. Look at that. And this was, if I can get my thumb into the bend, there, a big bunch of maggots. That was to get away from the perch. Well, at least we, at least we get to show you guys some fish. Good. And I knew it was wrong because I didn't have that net tipped over just at that angle, just on that slope. Just hit a different species. I struck, thought it was a monster roach and it's actually halfway decent bream. Let's have a look at it. He's out, he's out and running. Come back here. There he is. And he's just nicked on the edge as well, if you look. But there we go. Decent bit of fishing. Why couldn't I have something like this in that river? I made the right choice. Trying to get you guys some fish, which we have done. Thank goodness. What a good job I put the net that way. It's a bit flat, it's got to be just kinked. Try it people, try it. But I can't honestly say that that strawberry 
additive stuff's made a blind bit of difference to my regular ground bait. Unless it's what sent the perch nuts, I don't know. <laughs> There's a little nibble. So, two worms on the right hand side for this big perch, which I'm probably not going to catch. And a bunch of maggots on the left, trying to avoid the small perch. Beautiful evening, the last of I'm going to call it autumn, autumnal sunshine coming through on my back, it's which is very pleasant and um, well, perfect for float fishing. Well, I've got uh, third fish hooked up, this one's on the link ledger just under those rushes. I've been playing them for a while, Let's see if we can get him in the net. Here we go. Not big fish, but listen, after the river session, trust me, it's nice just to get that rod bent. Another one on the worm, guys. I'm not going to, uh, he came up, got him in really quickly, so he, I don't want to get spattered. And there's the worm, just there. It wasn't in the water, put a silver bobbin on. It wasn't there a minute. Nice car. Well, let's turn that trip around. Happy days. Gone. And all because I put the net at that angle just there. Perfect. Yep, yeah, it's another one guys, common carp, you have a side of oh, seven to eight I guess. Just get that net in the right position, oh no it's inside out, that's even worse. Perfect, perfect. Another bream people, that's on maggots again. Let's just lift that one. There we go, bunch of maggots. Keeps me away from the perch. Well, to a certain extent anyway. Not been too bad for jets today for filming. That's a churner. <laughs> well, it wasn't too bad for jets, but this one's... Uh, oh, look, I've got all rushes on the line as well. That was a fast take, to say the least. Let's get that one out of the way. We don't want any more of those double takes. Don't tell me that the old school link ledger and here, the little bobbins made out of hair grips, don't work. Mind you, I haven't got the fish yet. I just hope that doesn't jam in the tip me. It might. I'm just watching that piece of weed up there, hoping it slides down the line. Oh, it's off, flicked it off. Oh, he's coming in nice and quiet. Let's get him while we can. Sometimes you get a big fish like this. And sometimes you don't. <laughs> I did try to try and sneak him in. <sighs> oh, my wrists are giving me some jip today. My elbows, my arms. I kneel down, I can't get up again. Now, I've pulled him with a lot more pressure and he uh, doesn't like it. Sometimes you can actually sneak a fish in quite quickly, you know, without a lot of pressure. You 
got to get the, take the chance where you can. Otherwise, like this one, they suddenly wake up. I don't that my knees in. Another common. Might be fish of the day, this one, people. Yeah, that's fish of the day. Or the afternoon. That's a good one. I tell you, that fish is going to go around the 11s. It's going to go nuts now. Somewhere between 10 and 11. Definitely fish of the day. Got a funny old mouth though. How'd you go? I don't want to go out. He loves it in this net, look. He loves it. There he goes. Get that net. Absolutely. Have you not seen how my trip has turned round, folks? Struggling with those small perch. As soon as I get the net at that angle, game on. Very hard to pack up when it's still like this in your float fishing. But it has got a bit quiet. Even for the perch. Thank goodness. One day I'll get a three pounder out here, not the middle ones. And make sure you don't forget the lucky landing net angle. It's important. Mm-hmm. <laughs>